Good morning and welcome everyone and all of your smiling faces. This is wonderful. It is my distinct privilege to welcome you to the 2022 Upper School Honors Assembly. It's wonderful to have you all together this morning to share this milestone with our seniors and to honor the efforts and accomplishments of the students here before us. Today we acknowledge through awards a commitment to excellence in student leadership, academic and athletic achievement, artistic endeavors, and citizenship and service to others. In that same vein, I'd be remiss if I didn't just take a minute to give a shout out to the number of our athletic teams who have been busy advancing in their brackets the last couple of weeks. As we speak, we have a senior tennis player competing at the ten state tennis championships. Boys and girls lacrosse play this evening, and track competes this Sunday. Good luck to all of our Vikings in the upcoming competitions. Oh, to the senior class. For the longest time, I referred to you lovingly as the tennis ball moving through the snake. You have been the largest class moving through the upper school the last four years, and the largest graduating class to date. But being the biggest is just one descriptor. There's much more to you than that. You were the student leaders that helped us set the tone when COVID dictated we figure out a new normal. And likewise, you were the guides that helped your peers return to pre-COVID ways as soon as we got the green light. From the community feel of full assemblies and full junior speeches, to the return of the senior walk-in, and to the amazing CA breakout on Carlin Fields, you were determined to infuse joy and as much energy as possible into this school year and to engage fully in your final year of high school. And your kindergarten buddies. How amazing was that that you got to spend regular time playing with them monthly? They're going to miss your big kid presence. We know you have long anticipated this day, some with eagerness, some with nervousness, some quietly thinking, finally. But whatever you're feeling here today, you deserve to hold a keen sense of pride. You're almost to the finish line. Realize that there are a few times in your life with as much possibility as right now. Your teachers and family know that you've learned many lessons and take with you rich experiences, even those that were difficult, that have prepared you to move on to the next chapter. You're so ready. In the words of author A.A. A. Milne, how lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard? Seniors who said that our time with you was interrupted and altered in so many ways, but we're grateful and so proud to have done that journey with you. Here's to you, the class of 2022. Now, I'd like to introduce you to someone who has taught the majority of this class way back in Lower School. And many of you know him as Mr. C. Lloyd Sassetti, a native of New Jersey, started his teaching career in 1974 by becoming the very first art teacher to put on a smock in the Westville Public Schools where his wife Barbara taught first grade. In 1978, they both took positions working for their Ramco schools in Saudi Arabia, making it their home for 12 years. Their three sons, Michael, David, and Robert, were born in Saudi, but all three are graduates of Columbus Academy. The experience was life-changing, offering many travel opportunities in the Middle East and Far East. Mr. C was an art and photographer, photography teacher in the Durham Junior High School. While in the Middle East, Mr. C gave presentations on art and photography in Bangkok, Thailand, and in Delhi, India, for the Near East, Southeast Asia Conference of Schools. During the first Gulf War of 1990, the Sasseis evacuated from the Gulf region with their family and repatriated to New Jersey. It was at that time that Mr. Sassetti accepted a position at the Columbus Academy in 1991 during its first year as a co-educational institution. 
His fourth grade classes were all boys, including middle school history teacher, Matt Carter, who was just 10 at the time. This is Mr. Sassetti's 31st year at our school. When he did the math, he's taught over 2,500 students in the lower school. And this is his 48th year teaching art. Mr. Sassetti holds the Dixon Honorary Chair in Art and has a bachelor's degree in both sociology and art education, as well as a master's degree in education. Please welcome Mr. Sassetti. Thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Sykes. Mrs. Soderberg, faculty, staff, parents, and students. I am really honored to be speaking to all of you today, especially to the class of 2022. When the head of upper school called me into her office last February, I wasn't sure if I had done something wrong <laughs> since I'd never been called to the principal's office before. I said to myself, what could Corey want? When I sat, when I sat down with her, she said, I have a proposal. Then she said, we'd like you to deliver the honors assembly speech to the student body and to our honors society. My first reaction was, why me? All, of all people to be delivering a speech on this honorable day, why the lower school art teacher? The guy who had great difficulty passing algebra in high school. Then she said, we chose you because we taught so many of our upper school students. So when I, I looked into it, I found that I had taught more than half the senior class. So I guess it made sense that you might want me to address you today. I'm not very scholarly, but I give myself credit for knowing a couple of things. First, I know how children think, at least about art. And second, I know how children feel. I've had plenty of practice understanding how kids feel being a father of three. When it had time to settle in, I was terrified, just as you may have been before giving your children your junior school. The only presentations I ever made were to small groups of children, or small, small groups of teachers, and hundreds and hundreds of presentations to children about art over a 48 year career. So to get through the rest of this presentation, I'm just gonna make believe that we're in the art room with a group of say 17 third graders sitting on little blue chairs on the floor right in front of me, and I'm looking to call on Talia, or Autumn, or Max, or Blake, or Cyrus, or Chase, and all the other wonderful kids I taught who make up this great class in 2022. So, what could I teach you now before entering college and on to adulthood? When I really thought about it, everything I attempted to instill upon you then is true today. And that is, be yourself and take risks. And what do I mean by be yourself? Be proud of who you are, not try to be somebody else. If you do that, you'll end up being more creative, which really comes in handy in an art. And what about take risks? It's my belief that if you take risks in art and in life for that matter, you will grow as a person, which leads me to the theme of this presentation, and that is color outside of the lines. And what do I mean by that, color outside of the lines? We've all heard the phrase color inside the lines at one time or another, but what does it mean? When I looked at the definition of the phrase, color or stay inside the lines, it refers to staying inside the lines of a child's coloring book. But when it's applied to adulthood, it means adhering to norms. I'm telling you today that if you color or stay outside of the lines, you'll be more creative, you'll take more chances, and you will grow. I'm not saying that you shouldn't adhere to tradition, to rules, convention, or protocol. I'm just saying that if you take, play it safe and take no risks in life, you are destined to lead a dull. So, 
Indulge me with a few quotes that I gleaned from the internet, some from famous figures in history that express what I'm trying to say, and this one is my favorite. You have to color outside of the lines once in a while if you want to make your life a masterpiece. Who do you think said that? Albert Einstein. I love this one because it's from an artist, and you've probably heard of this one, Michelangelo. The greatest risk to man is not that he aims too high and misses, but that he aims too low and hits. An example of what Michelangelo was trying to say happened recently in the art. This child will remain anonymous. Let's call this child Jesse. Jesse draws beautiful trees, but whenever Jesse paints or arranges a printing plate or a model magic sculpture or draws on a piece of shrinky game plastic, Jesse uses the same tree image every time, even the same species of tree. They're great trees, but there's no risk. There's no real growth, and consequently, there is no reward. Which leads me to the next quote, which describes Jesse beautifully. Never be afraid to try something new because life gets boring when you stay within the limits of what you already know. So, come on, so say you can scroll through this. In my own practice as an art teacher, I always try some new, new and different art activities from year to year, just to avoid boredom. I could have repeated the same lessons which would have been easy and comfortable, but it would have been dull. If I were to travel the same road over and over again, the road would be very safe, but the road would get very stale. I'm ultimately asking all of you to quit coloring inside the lines at every turn and reach outside of yourself. Take chances from time to time, even at the risk of being wrong, which leads me to this quote. To live a creative life, we must lose our fear of being wrong. In my personal life, let's see. It's not strong. Come on. In my personal life, the best thing my wife and I could have done, other than raise children, was to leave the comfort of the United States and make a life overseas, which opened a myriad of opportunities I could never have imagined in, for the 12 years that we lived in the Middle East. Am I saying everyone should leave the country to have meaning in their lives? No. What I am saying is leave yourself open to opportunities wherever they may lead. I can give you one more example of when it would have been easy for me to play it safe when I was considering a challenging opportunity. In 1978, my wife and I decided to follow a dream and hike the Appalachian Trail. Since we had just quit our jobs teaching to travel and seek employment overseas, we could have convinced ourselves we didn't have enough time to do the 2,190 mile trek in one season, or we could have told ourselves it's just going to be too darn hard. Instead, we prepared the best we could, we had no doubts, boarded a train in New Jersey and headed for Georgia to begin a new adventure on the trail which led to Maine. We never did complete the Appalachian Trail. We only made it to Vermont. Did we fail because we didn't finish it like so many through hikers? On the contrary, we, we grew because we tried it. And now my final quote, which relates to the trail. The biggest regret in life is not that you tried something big and failed, but that you didn't try it at all. My parting thought to you is this. When Mrs. Isakaitis said she had a proposal for me, she implied that I didn't necessarily need to accept it. I could have told her, oh, thanks. I'm honored, but you know what they say about public speaking. It's right up there with death as something we all fear to one degree or another. I could have declined, but I'm asked taking that risk right now, right in front of you. And for some reason, I think I may grow from this. 
So, it's so funny that it's always scrolling. <laughs> so, go out there, color your future, and don't be afraid to color outside of the lines. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2020.